Now, fuel subsidy has been a perennial burden on Nigeria's economy, and the time for its removal is long overdue. We can keep kicking uh, the, can down, the can down the road. It's time we pick up that can and trash it in the bin. Well, there is never a sweet time to swallow a bitter pill, hence for the greater benefits of the health of the country and its economy owing to subsidy removal. Now that the subsidy removal is over, there seems like government is not looking back. However, there are several ways uh, by which the new administration can cushion the effect of subsidy removal without spending a dime out of uh, borrowed funds or from the World Bank uh, like everyone will expect. Well, we are, uh, what are some of these expected interventions from government specifically? And um, what does this really mean moving on even for the industry? The CEO and co-founder of Budget Nigeria, Mr. Olusion Onigminde, joins me on the show live from the United States of America to bear his mind on this development. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to see you, Shion. It's a pleasure being here with you, uh, Jodo. Thank you so much for yes. the invitation. Yes, I know that asking you what you think about subsidy removal mm -hmm. now might look like uh, uh, stale news. We're talking about everyone knows that subsidy is gone in Nigeria one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It's not in the budget. Funds are not allocated for this. But first, what's your reaction after the president made this move? What were you expecting? Uh, like Nigerians are more enlightened about this issue at the moment and not taking it the way they used to take it. That issue of trust between government and the people comes into conversation here. So what do you think about it generally? Um, I think it's been done. But even though I still don't agree fully with the process, I feel that there should have been more consultations and there should have been more uh, identified means of cushioning the effect, you know, um, so that people can understand that even if subsidy had been removed, um, these are the benefits that we are going to get at the end of the day. I didn't, I didn't see that conversation. I didn't see that um, um, engagement. Uh, for, and that made it much more difficult uh, as much as possible. Um, so for me, I think subsidy removal is, is, is required. Um, it's necessary. It's important. Um, but something that has to happen is trust has to be built, engagement has to happen in a very, very effective manner. And I didn't see um, that happen yet. Um, also, the issue of minimum wage, uh, remove, uh, increasing minimum wage is extremely important. Um, if minimum wage is not um, increased as it should be, then it will be on like, what's the, the whole effect of this whole subsidy removal? What it would it look like at the end of the day? Um, so for me, um, the government has to show trust. And I think NLC, TUC, ask them that they will wait a bit of time to engage with government on this. Um, so um, if NLC, TUC have engagement on this, then we can have conversations widely about, about how things should look different. Yeah. Mm. Well, interesting. Let me follow up with the fact that another fear at some quarters is the fact that um, diesel has been deregulated and also kerosene deregulated. And many will tell you that after this development, these two products are selling so much on the high side. What is different about PMS that everyone believes that uh, along the line uh, we will definitely get a more reasonable price or maybe there, could, there will be competition in that market. Yes, let me put it that way. What is different about PMS? Shion, are you there? Yeah, yes, I'm here. I mean, I think I was on mute. There will be challenges in there. You know, the transport system is heavily dependent on PMS. And sometimes that becomes a signal for inflation within the economy. So, I mean, as you can see, fears have significantly uh, risen. Um, I think at that point in time, adjustments will happen. I think this is just the short-term pain that Nigerian citizens are facing. And it seems that um, they will have to face those pain. The question, will the public office holders also be ready to face the pain also? I mean, would there be cost to public... Um, um, uh, public emolument and benefits? Would there be adjustments even made in how public contracting is done so that it seeks efficiency and things like that? Those are the things that have to come on the table. Without you not putting those things on the table, we're not going to be able to advance anything forward. Because at the end of the day, you say 
um, put more money in the hands of government, we remove subsidy, then that means the government gets more money, um, exchange rate um, is, is, it comes into like a unified uh, status, then government also get more money. But if you get all more money, there is no accountability and efficiency. And definitely, people don't still see the case as they should say. So I think Nigerians are dealing in trust here, and the federal government under President Tinubu should do more in terms of how do you want to push in this effect? Um, a few things could be done, as I've always mentioned. One is public transport systems should be more cheaper. Figure out the way that we can have, um, or people can have alternatives for um, for cheaper public transport systems. And I think conversations around uh, CNG powered um, public transport systems that has to be accelerated as quickly as possible. Food inflation. How do you ensure that you streamline the value chain of of, of, the, of the agricultural uh, market and to ensure that food is uh, people can have access to food? Uh, because if we have food inflation galloping and we also have core inflation galloping, and then there is going to be a problem in that regard. So, and the third one for me is also government to look within itself and how does it adjust, you know, its own size of government. And that could be the wrong side report on the table. That could be means that increase minimum wage. That also could mean um, um, also reduce the benefit and emolument of government. Or that also could mean contrast contract efficiency. So we are doing a few things, maybe right, but for it to make a meaning, it has to be holistic. A whole lot of things have to be packed together with it. Without that, we're just shifting the burden on the, on the citizens solely. The government itself also needs to take some part of the burden also. Yes. Mm. So definitely government has a role to play uh, here. Uh, fiscal responsibility uh, remains yes, key, uh, right? Fiscal responsibility and fiscal discipline remain very, very key. If those things don't happen, mm. um, at the end of the day, we would create another channel for selling a few people to get um, stupendously rich. And, and, and already we have a floating environment now. So if it happens as it should be, then definitely they can even um, put the currency in jeopardy in those, through those mechanisms. So what I would just say is, as much as possible, the government has to sit up and down that this is the chance that reforms only can be on those two twin issues. It also means that the cost of governance has to be has to be looked at. The minimum wage has to be looked at. You know, um, uh, contracting efficiency and, and for fiscal budget budget discipline. These things have to also be in the play. You know, um, when you put all of that together, that is when you can say yes. I really want to set this country on the right path. But if we say, you know, we don't want to, we reduce the inefficiencies either from the subsidy or the exchange rate management, that is just not enough to change the system significantly. Sean, let me take you to talk around that currency issue, uh, which finally we've seen that um, with the suspension of the CBA governor, uh, we are seeing uh, almost a liberalization of that market. And many are saying, or many have said before now that that's the way to go. We allow the demand and supply of the currency control that market. In your thoughts, uh, you, you, you've studied this market for some time. Do you, what do you think would happen uh, as we move that route? Some are saying we could have a shift that's on the high side. Then later, uh, competition would also come in, oh, just like the oil and gas market. And then it will become so competitive that we'll get the currency at uh, well, maybe appropriately priced. Um, there are a few things for me. One is to look at uh, when we say we want it currently appropriately priced. Um, one, a currency uh, value or price is a price, which means uh, it's an evidence of, of the state of the market. You know. Um, um, if the market says that there are more buyers and there are more sellers, then you get you get what you get, you get what it is. You know, first thing is how do we make sure that we have stability? That's the first thing you want. To do. Everybody wants to see stability. Um, you don't have a currency that is moving, is gyrating upwards and downwards. And 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 the key element of seeing that stability is to look at things in the short term and long term. What we have done in the short term is to liberalize it. That would be helpful. You know, whatever we are doing with the multiple exchange process before was was prone to abuse, was prone to corruption, did not incentivize capital inflows into the country. So that needed just to stop. But something that has to be different in one is you can't run a free flow the economy without some form of regulation. So there has to be an this is, this is a time for the CBN to set up regulation. And those regulations especially has to do with commercial banking. You know, if the CBN 
pray that you believe that there could be um, a, a hands-free system um, in the way he wants to do exchange rate management, then there will be bedlam on their hands. So I'm not saying that you fix a price. I'm not saying you peg a price, but you still have to really watch the system, you know, in a much more, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an intense manner to ensure that somebody, people are not gaming the system. Because you are even have a situation where banks could even be holding some of these funds and they could be using that to manipulate you know the the exchange the exchange rates and 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 all of that. So or even in terms of how they do allocation of exchange rates. So that's something that has to happen. The other thing that also has to happen is your long term thinking in making sure that you create a stable exchange rate, which is your level of productivity in the economy. Currently, we are supposed to be selling oil at the maximum um, um, at maximum production, which means oil prices are favorable now, like seventy five to like eighty five dollar. A barrel window, we are supposed to be selling at maximum production. It's the very same period that we can't even get 1.2 million barrels. We can't even do that. So, and we were a country that even in the 70s and the 80s, we we're doing 2 million barrels, we we're doing 2.5 million barrels. So, something has to look different at this point, which is the CBN has to see that where are the production levers of this country that can also generate effects and bring effects into the company. Because, and that's one component. The second component is how do we also build a robust market that also generates portfolio investors? And you will see that the stock market is also, is already on a bounce. And why it's on the bounce is because people are expecting that this whole liberalized environment is going to bring in uh, portfolio investors into the stocks and into the bonds market. So you might see a bit of movement and activity within that environment. But also, there's also a chance for the government to also sit in and build a thesis for investment in Nigeria because you want that, you know, you want those three FX earnings, FX levels to come into the country. You want that which you can produce internally, either agricultural export, oil export, gas export, whatever you find in your capacity, um, within your capacity to do, you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to have an FX flow there. You want to have an FX flow in the portfolio investment cycle, which is what we had in the 2010 to 2014 period, you know, you want an MPI inflow into that environment. And what those MPI inflows are looking at, they're looking for stability, they're also looking for easy exits, you know, from the market. Something the CBN has not been able to guarantee in, in the last few years. And thirdly, is that you also want FDI, you also want to be an investment thesis. The foreign direct inflows can flow into the economy, they have much more sticky element. They stay for a few while, a little while, before the funds are profit or earnings are being repatriated. So unfortunately, in the previous administration, the FX flows that we created was that we distorted the market in a very bad way around pricing, and we now heavily borrowed on the on the on, on, on foreign debt. So we took a lot of foreign debt, for foreign debt, which were used to show up um, the currency position or make sure man do some currency exchange rate uh, exchange rate management, which were technically not necessary. I think these times might be different, but the whole free flow thing, if it's going to work, if no man's not going to work back on it, because at the end of the day, there's also a social element into all of this, whole, uh, there's also a political economy into all of this decision making. It means that this is the time for us to heighten our production and to build an investment case for Nigeria to external and internal investors. Great stuff, Shil. Uh, gas development to me uh, is another way to go. Uh, we mm -hmm. have proven and unproven reserves mm. uh, in our country. And uh, we are thinking of CNG-driven um, vehicles as in, you know, move away from PMS and all of that. But my question really is gas development, taking advantage of that gas is capital intensive. Where do you think we'll start from? At the time, there was a support, I think, from the CBN too, with regards to our gas market. But what really is a clear way or clear perspective Give us a clear perspective of what you think we can do to improve or take advantage of our gas resources at this time. Well, it, it comes back again to pricing. You know, the, you know, because at the end of the day, you want, uh, you know, there's a price cap even within the grass environment, and that people would analyze that that's as disincentivized investment as it should be. Um, so maybe uh, it's caught, you know, our, our heavy dependence on LLNG, you know. And, and when you look at those trends, those are multi-billion dollar projects. So for you even to get into FID, to the technical capabilities in, it's a little kind of a lot of work. Um, and unfortunately, we have not taken advantage of the gas market as we should. 
Um, for example, look at what's happening within the Russia and Ukraine axis now. Um, and Europe is begging for gas. Um, we did that in the last uh, few quarters. We were not even able to provide any meaningful support in that realm just because our production levels are not even high as they should be. Compared to countries like Qatar, which are like, you know, a small country, you could barely see them on the global map. But they're they, they a huge gas giant. For me, I, I think we talk about energy transition now, we talk about climate change now, we talk about how do we manage the movement from fossil fuel and energy to, to, you know, to cleaner energies. Gas is still like the transition gas that we, transition fuel that we have at this point. And, and I think this is the time for Nigeria to really ramp up usage, usage within. Um, usage also on the external side. So, if, and, and, and I think it's just a lot of things where we are evidently subsidized in terms of or put a cap and we're disincentivized investment. And, and, and because we were trying to manage what would the inflationary impact be on citizens. And, you know, I'm running on some of this. I've also been coming from government having like a socialist bent, but it's time like, it seems... This is the time that Nigeria wants to bite all its bullets, you know, and at the end of the day, when you do that, the economy would rattle in the short run. But they are still, they, they, if if everything is done right, which means government is also sincere and deals with trust, um, you're going to have, you know, significant impact and, 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 and the right effect over time. But in my own view, this is the time for government to also look at the pricing within the gas invest, in, 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 in sector. Maybe some of the support and subsidy could be around production. You know, to mean that we, we ease the whole process of you setting up, uh, you know, um, a gas plant or, you know, and, and gas converters, those that capture clear gas and all of that. This can be a chance for government to provide incentives for people to do that, rather than put the pricing on the caps, on, on, the, on the price that's literally disincentivized investment within that environment. Finally, Shio, uh, interesting conversation, I, I, I must say. Uh, and um, I'm looking at the after effect now of removal of subsidy. Now, many will say, yes, we'll take the pain for this time and would, of course, get the benefits uh, while we uh, move on. And uh, minimum wage, let's, ex let's expect an increase. What would these do to inflation figures uh, that we expect? That is one. Uh, two, it's a two-in-one question. Uh, removal of subsidy is just a step in deregulation. Would we say that the downstream of our oil sector is now totally deregulated? Let's wrap up on that note. Um, if you remove subsidy, it's how the market reacts from that environment that will decide if you are in full regulation or not full regulation. First of all, we have done the PIA. Mm. Um, so the PIA means that we have set the tone that NMPC is not, should not technically be a state oil company. What we should NMPC should inch towards, and I think I've read uh, part of the advisory notes. The current government is on the the NMPC should be floated, you know, and this part of its shares should be sold to public. I think that's something that has to be hinged. That's something that has to get into the works right now, um, so that number one, the government will be able to receive significant earnings uh, from that environment, and number two, also you are also are going to be running uh, a more profit-oriented organization. For years, NMPC has, you know, has been tied to the apron of the federal government. And because of that, a lot of things, a lot of abuse, a lot of waste has happened within that environment. So this is the chance that um, if we're going to talk about a deregulated environment, yeah, the legal framework is there already. We make sure that actually we follow the tenets of that PIA. Um, we don't create a monopolistic environment for for, for downstream because there's a tendency to do that with the with the current um, um, with the Dangote refinery. So if we don't create a monopoly, we open up the market so that um, everybody is free to compete in the right manner. And I think we will be able to say we have a deregulated downstream, and then we put an NPC for sale um, uh, in the future. The other part also is also looking at the social cost of all of this decision because, uh, like you said, some of these things would come. Any uh, most of these adjustments, either you look at the exchange rate situation or you look at um, the um, the um, the first subsidy removal, they have social cost. For example, the exchange rate means that uh, the entire idea of BDCs, uh, you know, might be over. You know, there is no point you going to a broad change if we are in a unified market. Because the spread is so thin, and I don't need—I would not need to just go to the broad chain and be looking for a naira or two naira. 
if the banks can offer me something very, very close in that environment. So something also to look at. Also, also to look at the labor. You know, the worker, the Nigerian workers cannot subsist on the current on the current um, environment. Of, I mean, the the the, the thirty thousand there. I mean, no, but that's too small. So it also means that the government has to deal in hope. Of what would the minimum wage should look like? You know, because it, it, the state governments are going to get more money now. Um, for example, you are all the old crew that NPC was buying or swapping, and they were not paying for because of subsidy. All of that money is expected to come to the federation account now. So that's like a big bonus for a fact. Um, secondly, exchange the funds will now be converted. I mean, for those who are sold in dollars by the IOCs and the JV partners, the, the funds will now be paid and all the taxes will now be converted at the full rates if, if we are truly in a full floating economy, which means what is converted at 400 or 60 of, and now is going to go to 755, which also means state governors or the federal government gets more money so all of that has to mean that you're also taking care of your workers in a much more significant way. But we'll watch as things unfold, but um, it looks like um, some form of direction is happening. Or uh, like uh, Mr. Bismarck Rwani said, he said there are policy actions and there are institutional actions. Some of these things are policy actions. If we really want to go there fully, we have to make sure that these plans are holistic. The body can't just be on Nigeria and say, look, the government also has to look inward into its fiscal inefficiencies and be ready to tackle that significantly. Interesting conversation as usual. Mr. Olusheun Onigbinde is co-founder, chief executive officer, Budget Nigeria. Thank you so much. It's always nice having you join the program. We appreciate it. It's a whole pleasure. Thank you so much, Olu. Thanks a lot. Yeah.